Welcome to Everything Money. In this video, we are looking at the company ChargePoint, a very exciting company. We will show you the financials, the very little financials using our Everything Money software, and we'll try and separate the financials from the stock price, bringing you a mindset of how to invest. If you're looking to trade ChargePoint at a quicker pace, we will head over to Mo and he will show us those trends and charts to trade this. But why should you listen to us? I represent you, the viewer. I bring your questions to a couple wealthy guys that manage over a hundred million dollars $100 million in businesses, real estate, and stocks. We are not some guy sitting in his bedroom only investing maybe a hundred grand. This is serious stuff. We'll show you how the mindset of a wealthy person works looking at a company, a new company like ChargePoint. Paul, give us your thoughts on this exciting EV company, and we'll head over to Mo later on how to trade this. Go ahead, Paul. Thanks, Seth. First off, follow us on Instagram. We have a new Everything Money account, and also follow us personally. So guys, this is a very new company. So here's our Everything Money software. I will go to the eight pillars part, type in charge point holdings. Look at how, look at this company. This was obviously a SPAC before they went public. Everybody was talking about the hype back in, what is this? Um, this Christmas time, $46 a share. That's when Stock Mo bought. Is it really? Probably. Got it as low as $18, <laughs> which is a drop of 60%. And now it's at $25. So guys, our process here, we are the boring value investors. If you ever listen to Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger and say, those guys make sense. That's what we're trying to emulate. Are we exactly like them? Absolutely not. No value investor is exactly the same, but the fundamentals are the same. The issue I have with companies like this is in our software, let's go to the income statement. There's nothing here. Oh boy. Guys, we need data. Why do we need data? Because to me, if I want to see how the next 10 years will look, I want to look back at the next 10, 20, and 30 years. How have the people in the company operated? This has no history. It's already hard enough to determine the future when you invest. You can't even determine what's going to happen in your life in the next week. And now you're making guesses based on what some executives that don't know who you are are going to do in the next 10 years. This is insane. This is the process we're trying to teach. We are trying to teach the process of understand the past and be conservative about the future based on what you've seen in the past. Now, does that sound boring? Yes, it is. But the boring guys have always been, if you go look at the history, the boring investors are the ones that do the best because we're trying to find every investment we look at, we say if there's 100 of these, would we buy them? I'm looking at ChargePoint here. They did $130 million in revenue last year. They lost $100 million on that. What the heck? Look at their shares outstanding. They went from 39 million shares outstanding to 312 million shares outstanding. They're diluting the heck out of everybody. There's no data here, guys. Our eight pillars tab is created to skip all the steps for you. No data here. Five, we look at five-year data. There's no da not enough data here. There's nothing here. Is that a problem? Yes. Because if anybody out there is trying to sit there and say they know what's going to happen to this company, they're absolutely lying. They have no idea. They're guessing what's going to happen. That's the same way it is with every company. However, I'm quite sure this is the data on ChargePoint. Let's go with Microsoft. This is the data on Microsoft. Which one's easier to determine the future of? It's pretty obvious. Look at how much data is here on Microsoft, Seth. Yeah. It's all available in our software. Right here. It's going to show you everything you need to know about the company. Look at the eight pillars tab. We have check marks. We have X's. We know exactly what the past looked like. And then we can sit there and say, hey, do I have a reasonable assessment of what's going to happen in the future? Sure. Then I go to my stock analyzer tool and input my assumptions for the future, and it'll tell me exactly what to pay today for the stock. You can't do that with ChargePoint. ChargePoint's exciting. What are they trying to do, Mo? They're, the, they're kind of the biggest Tesla competitor right now. They have charging stations everywhere, Whole Foods markets, different parking lots, et cetera. The problem with them is a lot of them are often broken. So like you go there and you try to pay and it just says this one doesn't work. So they need to get those kinks out. Now, the nice thing is they have the infrastructure in place. Now they, just, they need to make the infrastructure work. So that's the issue that I've had with the charge point chargers. So, so somebody out there is saying, Paul, this is the future. Yeah, well, yeah, in yeah. More cars. Oh, go on. Well, 1999, internet was the future. Yeah. How much bigger is the internet today than it was back in 1999? Hundreds and hundreds of times bigger, yeah. probably more. But how many internet companies went bust in 1999? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Well, I mean, the vast, vast, vast them? majority yeah. didn't even lose a lot of them, went to zero. So I look at the saying, guys, a company can have an amazing future, but 
if it's not implemented well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you want look, look at look at the market of airplanes and cars. In the last hundred years, airplanes and cars have skyrocketed in terms of how much people use them. How many car companies and airlines have gone under in the last hundred years? Thousands. 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 And if you want to look at a, this company, just take out financials, get rid of it, and just look at the infrastructure of it. Tesla is going to be starting to allow people to use their charging stations. And I'm telling you right now, Tesla has a very, very good network and the chargers work. And if they don't work, they tell you on the app that they don't work. These guys don't. So if you get a true competitor to come in there like Tesla and say, hey, anybody you can charge their car here. It, Paul, you can take your Porsche to Tesla and charge it there. Charge points in some real trouble if they don't get it together. By the way, that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for the time where I can go take my, because I have a Taycan. And unless it's at my house, I got to go to a, a Porsche dealership to charge it. So I can't wait. So now if I want to go to Columbus, I can't go to Columbus. You don't have the charge point app or? I, I, I have it. I mean, you it you can do. I think I, I don't know for Porsche, but I think you can probably well, do it at to get an extension. Let's go look but, at it. So um, I do know there's like the dongles that we have for like yeah. all the Apple products. There's yeah. like different dongles where you can plug in. Because so, I have a hard time getting the right. I can't get my. I don't use ChargePoint because I yeah. can't find the right Tesla charger. Sometimes. Did you watch uh, Marquez Brownlee's video around the? the uh, one thousand mile road trip that he did. Go so on. what he what Marquez Brownlee did? He's another YouTuber. He went to he did he took a Tesla, a Ford, and an Audi, um, an internal combustion engine, and they did a they did a loop. And the Ford could not charge anywhere because it was using those those charge point stations, the um, EV USA station, whatever it is. And it took them forever, and they didn't even finish the one thousand mile loop. Tesla flawless. It was just a flawless trip. So. You really got to factor these things in when you're talking outside of the financials because that's all you're talking about right now is outside of financials. I mean, it is funny people buy electric cars without even really knowing this infrastructure, and I'm included in this. I mean, yeah. there are times where I can't find a damn charger. I mean, I was going to get that. I, I pre-ordered the Ford F-150 Lightning, and the second that I saw that video about those that you can't really charge on the road, ah, I was done with it. No chance I'm doing that. So, Paul, what are YouTubers doing when they're really pumping this at its heights? They're telling people... A new investors a year ago that this is the next best thing and they're really pumping this. It very well could be the next best thing. But to me, if you have a hundred of these charge point companies with these exact same thing, exact same model, you're going to lose a lot of money. We once did like a re some research. We went back to 1999, 2000. We bought all the, all the hype stocks. From then until now, the market's got up 6.6%. All the hype stocks went up 3.3%. And 80% of that, that increase was from Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. So it took three companies going up an astronomical amount to make up that 80% of the 3.3%. You need to decide what you're doing. Valuations drive in the long run. That's what drives prices in the long run is valuation. Charge point, I have $130 million in revenue. I know I have friends here in Cleveland who have more revenue than charge point does. Now, does charge point have, a, have, more, have more potential? Absolutely. And you should pay more for more potential. They also diluted the crap out of you. Going from 30 million shares to 300 million shares. That's the problem. And if you're watching this video and understand that, go watch other videos. You'll understand how important it is to avoid companies that dilute you. If a company goes from 30 million to 300 million shares without a stock split, then if they go, go grow in size by 10 times, you're essentially the same. You've gained nothing from it because they already diluted you 10 times. So guys, this is all part of it. Our software is here to teach you all this process. It's only 90 cents a day. You get everything you see here in a mobile app. You get exclusive daily content from most Seth and I. You get access to all of us. And most importantly, you get 6,000 other people in our community who buy the software that you can talk to on a daily, hourly, minute-by-minute -minute basis about your ideas, including ChargePoint. If you like ChargePoint, you can talk about it. There's no discrimination against that. It's only 90 cents per day if you increase your returns by 1% or 2% a year. From that, it'll lead to hundreds of thousands and potentially millions of dollars extra for 90 cents a day. Everythingmoney.com or Patreon. Sign up at either one. You know, the difference with everythingmoney.com is no sales tax yet, and you don't get double charged in the first month. It's a no-brainer. Go do it. And Mo? There is a way to make money on this stuff, and this is how you do it. You come and you actually find real trends that happen. Come right through the sweet spot and look at this. I mean, you could have caught this entire run here. Which and candlestick would I you're bought? You're still on. in the stock. You're still in the stock. That this green is, one this right one there. Right here. Yes, yep. that's what I thought that's too. That's exactly what. Why it is. is that engulfing? Yeah, well, it takes it, out. It was the, an engulfing candlestick yeah. in the sweet spot. That's right. Everything was setting up perfectly. But you got to let a couple ca couple candlesticks develop, right? Yep. You can't just go off exactly, the first one. Exactly. Exactly. And then at this point, you're in this thing, and there was no reason in here because this stochastic is still up here over eighty percent. You were, are still in this stock the whole way up, maybe taking profits going into different moving averages. What's the price of entry? Um, and what was it down there? Oh, was this October or Mo? This was seventeen bucks. 
let's call it 1980. What's that now? 80 cents, and right now it is at 25 bucks. 25 bucks. Oh wow! Yeah, that's great. And you're still in it. You're still in it because if you get if this thing gets get some buying volume coming in and you break through the 200 day moving average, you're still you can still keep riding. I this think thing. you're right up high. Yeah. Yep. If this resonates with you, Mo, tell them how they can join the bid and ask. Uh, go to everythingmoney.com, join the Bid and Ask Nation. You get my Trading 101 series, which explains exactly what I just said to you. I do monthly seminars. I have the Employed Trader series. If you want to do learn how to trade on charts or something that you've always been interested in, and instead of just winging it, come and learn certain rules and a process, and you will do very well. Final take and mindset, Paul, on investing in new companies like this. So Avoid. The tank. Avoid. That's it. Avoid. And you know what? If this one goes to be a trillion dollar company and they be successful, that's awesome. And I have no problem avoiding it because it probably saved me from the other 99 companies that went to zero and it wouldn't have made up for the difference in, um, that I made off of charge point. Yeah. I mean, you've already lost almost three quarters of your money uh, if you invested in this when other folks told you to. So be cautious out there with these new companies. That is our take. A final thumbs up. Join Mo in the morning at 9 a.m. You can learn more about trading. That's our take. And um, see you next video. Thanks for watching.